Hello my dear students, today we are going to start a new chapter of class 12th history that is chapter number 10, Colonialism and Countryside. In this chapter, we will discuss the impact of the colonial rule that is, that is the British rule on the countryside of India, that is on the village areas. So, we start our first topic of the chapter and the first topic is Bengal and Zamidars. As you all know that Bengal was the first region to be occupied by the Britishers. And after occupying the Diwani of Bengal, the problem of the financing of the trade of, by the Britishers gets solved, uh, solved. Earlier, before getting the Diwani of Bengal, all the trade in India was financed by the British uh, East India Company from the money they brought from their country. But after getting the Diwani of Bengal, now all the uh, trade of the region was financed by the revenue collected by them from the region of Bengal. So after getting the region of Bengal, now they started thinking to have a regular flow or regular source of income for them. That's why uh, they started to introduce several kind of a land revenue policies. Um, so, beta, firstly, we start discussing about the land revenue policies introduced by the Britishers. This thing you studied previously also in class 8. In class 8, there was a chapter in which you studied regarding the land revenue uh, settlements uh, introduced by the Britishers in India. And uh, they are you study regarding three main land revenue settlement. First one was the permanent settlement, then Riyotwari settlement and then Mahalwari settlement. So in this topic we will discuss mainly about the permanent settlement which was introduced in the region of Bengal and which was the first settlement introduced by the Britishers. So firstly we start studying regarding the permanent settlement. Here I am giving you a brief uh, introduction regarding the permanent settlement uh, because you have studied the topic in class 8th also. Permanent settlement was the settlement which was introduced in the year 1793 by the Britishers and according to the settlement the revenue demand was fixed and it was fixed at the highest level. Okay. After that, the settlement was made by a Zamid, with the Zamida class. Who were the Zamidars? Zamida were not the land owners. They were just the revenue collector. Means the uh, official appointed by the Britishers to collect the revenue. So these Zamidars were giving the charge of nearly up to the 400 villages. Means a Zamida was giving the charge to collect the revenue up to 400 villages. Then they have to collect the revenue and give to the Britishers. And the settlement was introduced by Lord Cornwallis. So these are the important points regarding the permanent settlement. And these are the key points which are uh, key point asking in various competitive exams also. So remember once again revise permanent settlement. Uh, introduced in the region of Bengal and it was the first settlement uh, done by the Britishers. It was introduced in the year 1793. Um, according to the settlement, uh, the revenue demand by the Britishers was fixed and the settlement was done with the Zamida. Zamida were not the landowners, they were just the uh, revenue collectors. And the uh, settlement was introduced by the uh, official known as the Lord Cornwallis. He was the Governor General at the time. Okay. Now we start studying uh, regarding the chapter. In 12th standard, what you study in the chapter, you are going to study about the permanent settlement. In 8th class, you study just the facts. But now you go inside the story and uh, know the real ground of the story, what was actually happening at, by, after the introduction of the permanent settlement in the region of Bengal. What were the problems faced by the Indians after the introduction of the uh, permanent settlement, this uh, land revenue settlement, okay? 
but before that there is a story which um, tell you about why what make the britishers to uh, did this settlement to introduce this land revenue settlement or to fix the revenue demand what happened was that during the year 1770s there was a famine in the region of bengal and because of the uh, famine uh, the prices of the goods goes down and because of that people can't be able to uh, pay the revenue because of all these situation um, uh, when uh, riot or the uh, riot is the term used for the peasants or the cultivator when the cultivator can't be able to pay the revenue then britishers started thinking to have a um, certain kind of a solution so that they have a regular flow of the revenue and the solution they got in the form of the permanent settlement another thing was that uh as i told you during 1770s there was a condition of famine in bengal condition of famine was due to one of the reason was that um, before the permanent settlement uh, britishers were taking the revenue from the collecting the revenue from the peasant and because of that uh, revenue collection they saw that peasant were not ready to invest anything on the uh, on improving the quality of the land that's why they uh, were thinking to introduce certain kind of a revenue settlement so that the peasants or any of the person who is concerned with that land have some money with them which they can also invest on improving the quality of the land two reasons behind introducing the settlement one so that britishers have a regular flow of the revenue or the regular flow of the income with them second thing so that the peasant know that this much of amount they have to give as a tax and rest from rest of the amount they can invest the money on the uh, on land so that the quality or the fertility of the soil can be increased so that there will never be in future the chance of the famine like condition that was the reason why they started thinking of introducing certain kind of a settlement and the settlement come in the form of the permanent settlement okay now you know the background what was the reason why the settlement was introduced now we come to the first uh, sub topic of this topic that is the auction at burdwan but the burdwan is the region or the village in bengal auction auction is the term used for nilami uh, so there was the auction of the land at burdwan so uh, this is um, seen uh, shown in this passage what is there there was the zamindar at burdwan whose land was auctioned a scene of the auction was there whose land was going to be auctioned and after the auction what was uh, what we came to know that most of the auction was fictitious or the fake one means actually uh, in the auction the land was bought by the people of the uh, zamindar of the burdwan means his uh, own servant buy the land that's why the auction was a uh, fake one and after the auction the uh, land is still uh, belong to the zamindar now what this story show us this story um, when we go inside the story this thing show us many thing about the condition of the uh, zamindar of the bengal one thing was that one question which come in our mind was that why the land of the uh, zamindar was auctioned so the reason was that there was a means these zamindars have to pay the land revenue at a particular set of time there was a, a rule for the payment of the revenue known as the sunset law since according to the sunset law till the time of the sunset they have to pay the uh, revenue means these zamindars have to collect the revenue from the peasant and have to give to the britishers if they can't be able to um, fulfill this thing or can't be able to pay the revenue then their land or their zamindari get auctioned means given to someone else uh this was the reason why the uh, land of the zamindar of burdwan was auction second thing which uh, we have seen was that most of the auction uh, land was the fictitious means fake one most of the auction was the fake one it means that the zamindar class also uh, found the way to come out of this crisis 
means what they did they uh, when their land was auctioned they make their own people sit at the place at the scene and uh, those people uh, make the means uh, buy the land during the auction or try to uh, manipulate the thing and in this way the land of the that zamida gets saved so now we go in detail into the chapter then you understand the things more nicely so our second sub topic is the problem of unpaid revenue it means that beta the problem of unpaid revenue as i told you now in in 1770s rural economy of bengal was in crisis uh, how the uh, rural economy or the village economy was in crisis because there was a famine kind of a condition uh the there was a bad harvest during that time in the year 1770s and because of the bad harvest or because of the famine type of the condition the peasants can't be able to pay the revenue and because of the this reason only the britishers thought of introducing a certain kind of a settlement um with the indians or the with the peasants now our another sub topic is why zamindars default on payment it means that the question this kind of question can also be asked in the board exam what were the reason why zamindar can't be able to pay the uh, revenue to the land revenue to the britishers so there were many reasons behind it first one the first cost was that the revenue demand made by the britishers was very high so this was also the reason why they can't be able to pay the revenue because land revenue demand was so high second sometime or most of the time there was a bad harvest and because of the bad harvest the prices and because of the bad harvest these zamida can't be able to collect the revenue from the uh, peasants because peasants don't have anything with them how can they pay the uh, rent to the zamindar and if zamindar can't be able to collect how can uh, zamindar pass the revenue to the britishers so this is the another reason that is the bad harvest third reason was the low price sometime what happened in the market the prices of the crops which they got was so low low that's why they can't be able to pay the revenue fourth sunset law regarding this i told you there was a sunset law which is not based uh, even on the uh, harvest season means britishers don't wait that uh, when the means they fix the uh, date until uh, that date date why the name sunset is given till that date uh, date until uh, the sunset before the sun set the zamida have to pay the revenue if they can't be able to pay the revenue till the last date before the sun set then their land will be auctioned means they will no longer be the in charge of collecting the revenue from that particular zamindari area but what happened most of the time the zamida can't be able to pay the revenue this scene the first auction scene which i told you that was not the only scene there were numbers of scenes like that means most of the zamindaris uh, means more than half of the zamindaris were auctioned because the um, this sunset law was very much strict yes sometimes what happened the peasant can't be able to pay the rent to the uh, zamindar because their harvest uh, season has not came and before harvest how they can be able to pay the rent and if the zamindar don't get the rent how can he pay the revenue to the uh, britishers so this was also the reason why uh, zamindar can't be able to pay the revenue now fifth limited power of the zamida but this is also important this zamindar class and uh, this zamindar class don't have any attachment with the peasant or the uh, riot which who reside in the village because uh, they came in the village they don't reside in the village Uh, they uh, live in the city area and they just came to collect the revenue they have their officials with them known as the amla these were the officials of the zamida who came in the village to collect the revenue and because they don't live in the place they don't have any kind of a sentimental attachment with the people with the peasant that's why they were so strict in collecting the revenue and this thing 
and because of this thing they also became unpopular among the villagers another thing these zamindars also after the coming of the british who their power also get limited earlier what was there these zamindar class had their own troops and uh, they were having their own um, um court system apart from that um they were having certain kind of a social position in the society uh, means whenever there was a dispute among the people they came to the zamindars for the uh, solving that disputes now but now all these things all these powers of the zamindar were taken away and transferred to the collectorate a new office of collectorate was created and all these powers of the zamida were transferred to the collectorate office that's why the zamida class as became powerless and once they became powerless uh, they lose their control over the peasants also so some most of the time what happened these riot riot means peasant class cultivators delay the payment um why they delayed the payment sometime because of their problem and sometime means uh they delayed the payment for making the hard time for the zamida so that the zamindari of that particular zamida get auction that's why they themselves um did this now beta these riot who were these riot who uh, delayed the payment they were mainly the big uh, riots means the cultivators who have who were having a large uh, portion of the land in the village who were the very influential one they were in the region of the north bengal in the region of the north bengal they were also known by the name popular with the name of a jyotidar or the haulada or kantidar or the mandal they were name uh, known by the various name and these people have a larger land and that's why they don't cultivate all their land by themselves instead of that they uh, uh, give their land to some other peasant for the cultivation purpose um, and did the share cropping and they were also included in the economic activity like that of the local trade as well as the uh, money lending and because of all these activity they uh, were able to earn a lot of the money and because of earning of the money they became a influential class within the village and because they became the influential one in the village and they reside in the village these people have more attachment towards the local peasant or the small peasant because whenever there uh, is a need of the money uh, with the small peasant they came to these haulardars or the jyotidars not to the zamindars that's why those uh, peasants were more loyal to these people not to the zamindar so sometime what happened because of the influence of the jyotidar um, many other small peasants also denied to give the payment to the zamindar and because of delaying of the payment this zamindar can't be able to pay the revenue to the britishers and his land was auctioned so this is all about uh one more thing have a quick revision of that this question remember this is important question can be asked why zamindars can't be able to pay their revenue or why they were the defaulters so these are the reasons of that this question can be asked for a one mark uh big riots what was the another name for the big riots so they were named by these different name like jyotidar haulada kantidar and the mandals okay and they were the uh, big peasants reside on mainly in the north bengal region uh, the uh, regarding them the things is explained by the, one of the englishman named francis buchanan who is this francis uh, buchanan he was the physician who came to uh, india as a physician of a, a lord wellesley and later on when he lived here he also uh, did the many surveys here and wrote a book wrote his account so from his account also we know uh, so much about the countryside and the condition of the zamindars and the uh, jyotidars so thank you